Hey there! Today we'll have a look at a pen that I borrowed from a friend. And that is the Cross Classic Century. Now this is an interesting pen, classic pen, uh, which is gold filled. And before I go into the pen, I just want you, I mean you can see it's gold, it's gold uh, colored. Uh, I just want to go into what gold filled is. Now it's there's also rolled gold, it's not the same. I'm going to quote from one of my favorite books, Fountain Pens, by Peter Twidle, and he gives fantastic descriptions that are extremely concise and just tell you everything you need to know. Gold filled. In this process, they bond gold to a base alloy using heat and pressure. This bond is permanent and the thickness of the gold is a hundred or more times thicker than gold plate. So it's not gold plated, it's a different process. And indeed, if you look at the cap, right there you can see there is some lettering I don't know if you can read it because it is very small um, but it says cross and then 1 20th 10 carat gold filled so I'm assuming 1 20th means the ratio of gold to the base alloy but it could be completely off and if I am I'm sure at least 10 people are going to point that out to me in the comments uh, it also says made in USA okay let's cover the parts of the pen and I'll tell you what I like about it what I don't like about it and um, here at the top of the cap, finial, very simple, uh, black and then a little gold dot. Um, I wonder if this is... No, I don't, actually I don't wonder, never mind. It's, it's a gold dot, you're never going to know what I was wondering about. <laughs> we have the clip, the clip says cross. And as you can see it's very stiff, clearly I don't want to bend it because it's not my pen. Uh, and then we have this very nicely tapered barrel. Now one thing that's really cool is the... Uh, well, it's not really fluted I think, but there are very fine lines which you may be able to see. I'm trying to capture that in the light. Very fine lines on the barrel. And it, it's pretty cool because it's lines and then an even bit of gold, then lines again, an even bit of gold, etc. So I, I think it's a very classy looking pen. Uh, a very thin one, cap slips off, and then you have the section, long and thin, and then you have the nib. Originally shaped nib, it is almost a bit, now this is probably going to sound like sacrilege, but a sacrilege, it's a little bit like a Lamy Safari nib in, in shape, with the bits, bits folded around the section, uh, sorry, about the, the, around the feed there. And the feed is pretty original too. There's no combs or fins, it's just black. Okay, they have a little ring there, and then you have the... So I'm screwing it. You have the uh, cross converter. It's one of those uh, converters that don't have the uh, uh, threads in them. So I think that's the green ones. Yeah, and the green plastic, and then the, the orange ones do have uh, threads. Uh, and it says cross right there. Okay. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Well, uh, it was a little bit uh, dry, um, but we fixed that. Um, there's an inscription on the nib too, which I didn't show you yet. So it says uh, cross 14K585 AT and then fine. Um, AT, that was the initials of the founder of cross. Mm -hmm. Townsend. I forgot the A. Again, at least 10 people are going to point out what the A stood for, and thank you very much in advance. Um, so, uh, it's, it was a little bit dry. Uh, in itself, I think it's a very refined pen. Uh, that's just, it, it just exudes class. Uh, the, the, not just because of the, the, the filled gold finish, but the whole thing, it's elegant. The nice fine lines, uh, the way they put in the clip, the, the tapered end near the cap, the long thin section, it's a very classy pen. This is something that would look very good in a shirt pocket. Uh, I like that. I like that you can really make those lines line up on the, the barrel and the cap. It's all very nice. It's also a decent length. It's not a huge pen, but it's definitely by no means small. And because there are no threads, you can really hold this section really low, as some people like, or you can hold it much higher, so you can vary it a bit uh, also for the size of your hands. Uh, the, the pen, for the record, does post very well, and it makes for a really nicely balanced pen, I think. Um, yes, it's metal, but it posts quite deeply, as you can see, so it's, it's really well done. 
Things I don't like about it so much. Well, the nib was dry, and you would say that with a 14K nib and a relatively expensive pen, uh, it shouldn't be dry. It should be tuned better. And I think that is something, maybe this was a bit of a lemon, but it's something Cross should really be careful with. Uh, pens at this this you know this price uh, they, they should write straight out of the box as you like it another thing i don't really care for myself that much but that's a very personal statement is that it's such a slim pen i like beefier pens and of course there are people who like thin pens so that is not a negative that's just a, a matter of personal taste but it really is an ultra thin pen um, Having said these things, I think it's a very, as I said, classy and refined pen. And what we're going to do next is test it, see how it writes, and that's all there's to it. Hope this was useful. Thanks for lending me your pen, and trusting me with your pen. Let's see how it writes, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Cross Century Classic. The nib is fine and the ink is ST Dupont Blue. Um, and the paper is Claire Fontaine. Now, this nib, that was a horrible RO, I apologize. Uh, this nib was a little dry. So I have tuned it a bit. So this may not necessarily be writing performance as it would be out of the box, just to give you full disclosure on that and I think now as you can see when you write faster there is I don't really see any skipping so I think it has become a bit wetter uh, after the tuning even so it is a fine nib and it's definitely a true fine uh, it's this is not the wettest ink in the world but it's I don't think it's an ultra dry one either so you can see that it's uh, it's it's not a super wet writer uh, also the there is some line variation but I found this to be a slightly bendable nib so I'm not going to push this too hard uh, it is a 14k gold nib but that doesn't necessarily mean anything I have used 14k nibs that are very hard too so um, you can see there is a little bit of line variation, but I wouldn't buy this if you're interested in, in springy nibs. It's probably not the, the best example of that. We can do, of course, some line, uh, sorry, some uh, reverse writing. And as you can see, the nib is, it's fairly sharp when you do that. And you will get, well, an extra fine line. And that's all that's to it. So, hope this was useful. Hope this gives you an idea of the pen. And I'll gladly see you later.